SpongeBob SquarePants is known for its hilarious scenes and of course some ridiculous moments. But what can I say? It's been a great show on our TV screen since 1999. Even though you can easily be carried away by the comedy in the show, there are some great life lessons you can learn from SpongeBob. Now let's dive into Bikini Bottom and search for the great life lessons they have for us. And by the way, if you're liking the content, please subscribe to this channel and share this video with everyone. Shut your half wit pie holes! Lesson number one, never procrastinate. Mrs. Puff, SpongeBob school teacher, gave them an assignment to write an essay on what not to do at the stoplight. SpongeBob took the homework with enthusiasm, but ended up procrastinating. People often say that procrastination is opportunity's natural assassin. If you don't do what you're supposed to do on time, you will never get back the time you have wasted. The best way to start doing something is to start doing it. <laughs> I mean, easier said than done, I know, but the thing is, you already know what you need to do, you just have to act on it. Life lesson number two is never give up. In the end, you don't really regret all the times you failed, you only regret the times you gave up. And Mr. Plankton has something to say about that. I don't know the number of times Thomas Edison might have failed before getting the light bulb done, but I know he's no match for Mr. Plankton's failure. Life doesn't reward people who give up. It rewards people who keep going, keep planting that seed and water it. Science kind of cheesy, I know, but don't give up because you might be very close to your breakthrough. This meme here with the guy mining for diamonds is a reminder of that and I hope it may serve as a reminder for you as well. While trying not to give up on your ambitions and dreams, don't take the love of people for granted. And that's lesson number three. In one of the episodes of Spongebob, Gary, a friend turned family of Spongebob, left because he was neglected by Spongebob. If you know Gary, you will understand how much Gary loves Spongebob and he's always there for him. Spongebob ignored that love. He took the love for granted until Gary left. That has to be one of the saddest episodes of Spongebob. Look closely at your life. Who are the people who genuinely love you and always are there for you? I was able to tell he was there for me when I hit hard times because when times are good, it's not that easy to tell when people are high-fiving you and all that. For those that are truly there for you, hold them tightly because when you lose them, you will realize that you have been playing with stones while letting go of diamonds. The fourth lesson is a serious one. Be nice, but be careful so as to not get used by people. <laughs> nah, this is harder than it sounds. It could be a terrible world we live in. People are always looking for whom to take advantage of. Unfortunately, good people are used and dumped. Am I saying you shouldn't be nice? No, but be careful so that you don't regret doing good to people. It's not an easy lesson to learn. What helps me is the saying that stuck with me. You treat them too good, they don't respect you. It helped me to balance being nice and cordial versus being too nice. This is definitely a topic that could be a video of its own right here. Charisma on Command and Joe Rogan do some living examples on how it's done. And if you guys want to see some more examples like that, comment below, let me know, and I'll definitely upload a video on that. While being nice to people, don't forget to work hard and smart. And that's lesson number five. SpongeBob is not only a workaholic, but he also works smart. This got him lots of awards at Mr. Krabs' restaurant. Now, whether you say laziness is a disease or it's not good, pre personally, I don't think, I think laziness is no bueno. It eats you deeply and you don't even realize it. Don't be lazy. Be like SpongeBob. <laughs> While focusing on your business and investing to make more money, remember that sometimes you must let people go, and that's lesson number six. SpongeBob met a seahorse which he named Debbie, or should I say, Mystery. It got to a point where SpongeBob had to let Mystery go. It was a hard decision, but one, he had to do, but he had to let go of his friendship first. Sometimes we love people so much that we start to become selfish. We only think about ourselves and do not care about them. We do this unconsciously though. We only think of how we will feel if they go. We forget that sometimes they also have places to go in their lives. They need to grow and it may be better for everyone as a whole. There were times in my life where I had to keep people at an arm's length. Forgive them of course for your own sanity so you're not wasting your energy on that but keep it moving for your own prosperity and at keep it at arm's length with whoever that individual is or whoever that group of people are. Know when it's time to release people. Know when it's time to let them go. It might be hard, but do it. If you don't, think of it as a fish just decaying and rotting in your room. You get where this is going. But before I go into the next lesson, I'm an author of four books, link in description. Lesson number eight, no matter how hard you try, people who hate you will never appreciate you. Remember, haters are gonna hate. 
Your haters only want to see you fail and will do all they can to see you fail. Here's a quote that you should know. People who hate you because of a mere jealousy over your success hurt themselves in disguise. This is because you carry an image of who they wish they had become or want to become or can't become. Don't hate them back because they may also become like you one day and it will mean hurting that image you carry. And that's a quote from Israel Moore. SpongeBob got one of those. Bubble Bath was SpongeBob's hater who wanted to see him fail. He ordered a Krabby Patty with pickles added to it. He did put the pickles, but Bubble Bath lied that they weren't added by SpongeBob. He mocked him. That act was horrible. Bubble Bath called SpongeBob a loser. The next time SpongeBob made another Krabby Patty with pickles, Bubble Bath ate it and still no pickles. But this time, he was caught hiding the pickles underneath his tongue. No matter what you do, your haters will always want to frustrate your effort and wish to see you lose. Don't ever let them get to you. They want to throw shade on someone so bright. Hmm, and you know, that could be a shirt. Stay focused and keep going. The best way to avoid someone's negativity is to surround yourself with positivity. Or better yet, maybe just ignore them. Whatever works for you. One lesson we can learn from Squidward is that there is a point you get in life and things become uninteresting to you. Perhaps you're at that point in your life where you're just getting there. Just know that there will be a time you will cut yourself off from the world. Or actually reduce it is the better word. There is a theory that says Squidward is depressed and that this is because he didn't get to be what he wanted to be. An instrumentalist. Well, that's a theory, but plausible. Your reason for losing interest might not be because you're not becoming a musician. It could be another thing. But know that you must know how to control these moods. Video creating and storytelling is my outlet for me. I love coffee and I love an adult beverage, especially an old fashioned that smoke. Whoo, but it's gotta be slow at the bar because I'm not gonna be one of those bartenders. But 10 years ago, I was all about going out every weekend. Now watching football and playing with my kids is another outlet of mine. <laughs> and I'm such a dad for saying this, but clean sheets after a shower is one of the best fit feelings for me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not sure what your outlet is. Heck, even going to the gym could be one. Whatever it is, we go through phases in life. Just make sure it's not at the expense where you cut yourself off completely. If you find what's interesting to you and what you're passionate about, that is life, baby. The last lesson from SpongeBob is life has stages. Stage one, the young and dumb. I like to call this the Patrick stage. This is when you're still young and just want to be childish. Every adult passed through this stage, everyone will go through it. Sometimes some might say we're still going through it. Anyways, stage number two, young, motivated, and hopeful. It's a stage where you want to get everything. You want to work everywhere so that you can build something. I call it the SpongeBob stage. Stage number three, invest investment and money stage. After gathering experience from the motivation and hopeful stage, you start creating your business and investing. This is Mr. Crab stage. And that's it on life lessons you can learn from Bikini Bottom. It's time to swim out of that city. I hope you've learned something new from this video. Perhaps you will not see SpongeBob SquarePants the same way again, but it's still SpongeBob SquarePants. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification for more videos like this. And also, Share the video. I'm leaving you off with this clip at the end. Thank you again for watching. Until next time. Well, this is the end. No, it's not, Squidward. It's not?